This is George Kroos, and welcome back to another episode of Mindset Monday. Hey everyone, how's it going today? I hope you're having a beautiful day wherever you are. I hope you're feeling filled with purpose and uh, that this video, this audio could help you, you know, start off your week with something to think about on how we interact with each other, how we interact with ourselves. And as I was thinking about the title of this, um, Mindset Monday, I was thinking about this idea of do we tear down or build up? And what does that mean? What does that look like? And maybe a story that would connect with this. And I actually remember when I first started teaching, uh, I, I, I've shared the story several times before, and I think it you know really has made, had an impact on me, is uh, I really love coaching basketball. Uh, I played basketball for uh, all my life. Uh, since basically I was 10 years old, still try to play as much as I can, uh, but really loved it, always wanted to play, and I, then I eventually became a high school basketball coach, and I remember actually in one of my first games, uh, it was actually, I was pretty new as my, you know, first full-time head coaching on my own, and one of the things that I did, because I grew up watching the NBA, I loved the Lakers, I loved watching, you know, great coaches, is I would yell at the referees nonstop. I would just get on their case, yell at them because I felt that was what coaches were supposed to do, right? Now, I wasn't a professional coach. I was coaching high school basketball, but it was just something I saw, something that, you know, I, I watched often and I would just yell and yell and yell. But here's the thing. I was pretty smart about it because I would yell to a point where I knew I wouldn't get a technical foul, right? And it basically, it's an unsportsmanlike foul if you're not familiar uh, with basketball. So I kind of knew the line, right? So I'd always kind of flirt with that line, kind of go through that process. But one of the things I noticed, I was really frustrated um, because my players uh, didn't know how to actually maintain that line. So they would yell at the refs, they would go overboard, they got technical fouls. And I was thinking like, hey, this is not your job. This is what I do, right? And it was really interesting because I, I was really frustrated with my players for doing the things I was doing because they didn't know how to actually maintain that line. And I bet you it was about six, seven games into the season. And I probably started getting a reputation in the league for being this coach that would just mouth off at people and share this. And I remember one game I was ref or <laughs> I was coaching and the referee I knew because I coached against him in football. Now I wasn't the head coach of the football team, but I was assistant coach and he was an assistant coach as well. So I knew him, I had some respect for him, but we were two totally different schools and actually rival schools uh, as well. And so he was refing, and I was yelling and yelling and yelling. And he came over to me and he, uh, he, he came and just talked to me during a timeout. Didn't, didn't give me a technical or anything like that, but I could tell he was frustrated. And he said to me, George, um, I, know you, I know you're a great coach and I know you have a really good heart but I'm watching your players and I'm watching how you interact and whether it's good or bad, they're going to follow your lead and you can see they already are. And so what's, what's the lead that you want for them to follow and how do you want them to interact? Because they're, they're they look up to you. They're watching you. And that was all he said, right? He didn't say, don't yell, nothing like that. He, he kind of gave me ownership over the process and made me really think about that. And one of the things that really kind of stuck out to me was I it just snapped. It just connected with me immediately that they were, <laughs> they were yelling, the players on my team, because I was yelling. And maybe they didn't have the maturity, and obviously I didn't have the maturity either as well, but I had an understanding of what the line was. They didn't. But the thing was they were getting too close to the line because they were following what I was doing, right? If I got outraged, they got outraged, right? And they would kind of go back and forth. So after that, I just quit yelling and I actually really thought about hey there's something and it didn't mean that referees didn't make bad calls things I didn't agree with but the way I interacted with them and treated them at a respectable level was something that was you know really kind of stuck out to me and I, I'm always kind of like side with referees and I remember actually then I started refereeing later and I, I remember being on the other end of that and someone saying hey like we don't put up with yelling in any place of work at, you know, if you're not doing a great job, so don't do it here. And I was that person who was yelling and I didn't want to be that person who was yelled at. But I think about the way that referee interacted with me and how he connected with me. And he put me in this space where he actually um, basically elevated me 
and and put it kind of into my hands but maybe you kind of really think about the process without being overly negative and he could have like easily teed me up and probably would have you know made me worse or made me resentful of this whole thing and so like here's the thing is that you're you might be listening to this saying like hey like well how does this actually change my mindset right how does this change my mindset like this is a negative interaction and of course you know having those moments you look and you you take ownership over that process is really important but i think about this coach and this referee who had this interaction with me and I don't know if he's listening. I don't know if he's ever thought about me twice. I probably saw him maybe three or four times in my life after. But that one interaction had a ripple effect on me. And I've always thought about it. And I've always thought about how am I that person? So when we actually go to a space where we try to elevate people and put them in situations where they're becoming successful, then how does that lead to you having an impact that goes beyond that one person? And I, I've always thought about this. And so like when you think about this professionally, I've, I always and I, I, I don't want to pretend that I've been 100% on this. And I, I bet you that referee is, was not 100% on this either. And I, I just try to, to, you know, err on the side of positive often and really kind of putting people in spaces where I have these conversations with them, where maybe I see something that I don't necessarily agree with. And here's like, here's something I did that was negative And I never really thought about the impact. Um, I used to comment on blogs quite a bit, but the only times I would comment on a blog was when I disagreed, when I had an issue. And I think that to me um, was a real struggle, right? Was something that I started noticing is that, hey, like I have, if this was a student in my class and the only time I ever talked to the student was to tell them I didn't agree with something or had an issue, like I would think that was horrible teaching, yet this is how I'm interacting online. So a lot of times when I would actually have some of these, these spaces, what I would try to do, you know, on a professional level, and I try to do this, is really try to ask questions to kind of understand, you know, the Stephen Covey first, you know, seek first to understand before being understood. That idea of like kind of going through and, and trying to get people to maybe think differently about a problem, or maybe, you know, even through asking the questions, maybe I see something different. But what the referee did that was so helpful to me was, he actually thought he made me think about the impact and the positive, you know, the positive uh, opportunities I had in connecting with my, my, my team, with my players and what I was role modeling. And so he kind of elevated me in that conversation instead of cutting me down and, and sharing this. And so I think, how do you have that impact on others? Because it's not only in that one interaction that you have with that person, but it's how that person is affected and how they treat other people. Right. And, you know, I, I I've seen some times where, uh, I, I think about some of those negative interactions that I've had with people, um, that I've shared something and maybe it was, you know, maybe I just kind of do the little sarcastic comment or share something and I don't see what's happening on the other side of the screen. Then I walk away from my screen and that one minute comment that I don't think about twice might have affected that person's whole day, but not only affected that person, but affected their family because that person's mood went down, right? Uh, how they maybe been a little more snappy to their kids. And, uh, and I, I understand it because I've been that way, right? When I feel someone is tearing me down, you know, to show their, to maybe kind of show dominance or show their better as opposed to like, hey, like this is a person that cares about me. This is a person that is trying to elevate me and try to lift me up. And uh, just as a side note, if I get to the space where I feel that people I inter interact with are in a space where it's about tearing me down, not lifting me up, those people, they're out. They're out of my life. I have no time for them. And I think that's a really important message uh, to, to kind of hear and to kind of think about because it doesn't just affect me, right? And it's not about handling criticism. It's not about taking that at all. I think criticism actually is very helpful when it comes from a place of elevation, not from a place of tearing down. And I'm not just talking about, you know, how you accept it, but how you give it as well, how you have these conversations. And so thinking about that on a professional level, and I remember on a, on a personal level, uh, when I was started gaining weight, uh, I, I had dealt with a lot of things. I know it might seem insignificant to people that are listening, but uh, I'm a big dog guy. And uh, I, I, when I lost my first dog, Kobe, it was pretty traumatic to me because to be honest with you, it was the first interaction I ever had with death. It was really, really hard for me. I hadn't ever lost and I would feel so blessed. I hadn't lost anyone that was really close to me. 
And so this dog that basically I grew up with, you know, as a young adult, had died. It was traumatic. And, and then my father passed away and, you know, changing jobs, stress, stress, moving, stress, stress. All these things started compounding me and it really started to take a physical toll, not just a mental toll. And I remember a friend of mine um, at the time just saying, oh, you're getting pretty fat. And just boom, just saying it like that. And not like, hey, like, hey, are you okay? The stress, I, I noticed that, you know, maybe, and, and I always think about how that interaction could be different. I just know it wasn't good. And kind of being in that space, I didn't feel good about how that interaction, because it was not acknowledging some of the stuff that I was going through or even trying to help. It was just kind of a dig. And it was kind of like, I'm already down. And you kind of kicked me here too, right? And kind of looking at that. And so when I, you know, share things too, because I'm very cognizant of this, when I share kind of my exercise habits, my healthy eating habits, I don't try to, you know, share these things in a way where I look at how much better I am than people that are maybe struggling with this. I try to share um, some of the things that have helped me, but understanding that everyone's on a personal journey and their time frame that they're going on to is, is different. And you know, kind of like lifting this up. And this is something I think about. Uh, I was talking to Chris Kennedy recently and uh, we were talking about when we're running and he is just so much in better shape than me. I was really trying to get in that space. And it was really interesting having this conversation with him. He's like, oh yeah, you were a pretty good pace when we went running that time. And, I, and, and to be honest with you, I was at the pace I could handle. And he was there supporting me, kind of going through that process, right? Where he could have just like lapped me, made me feel worse, where I wouldn't have wanted to get on that run again. But he kind of supported me through the process. He was talking to me. Uh, he was getting some exercise in through that way. And it gave me some confidence to, to go back the next day. Now, if we went running together and he just demolished me and, you know, pushed me to the point where I, I couldn't actually go, I probably wouldn't have went the next day. And even in that run, that little interaction that we had, in a way, um, he was there, which is probably one of the reasons why he's such a great leader. Leader, He was elevating me through that process. He was kind of connecting with me. So I want you to think about when you have those interactions, when you see those spaces, because I think in education, obviously, the whole point of it is elevation, is lifting people up, is actually helping people out, because it is not something that you just do for them selfishly it's something you do for you too right I think that when we have those little impacts whether we get credit or not they ripple throughout they make the people around us better and I know that I want to be around people that make me better I want to I want to I want to be people that cheer on my success when they see that I've gone to a space and then they're thoughtful and cognizant of when I struggle and they help to lift me out of some of those holes that I'm in too and, and how we connect. Because, you know, no matter how successful people seem, seem to be, we all struggle in different ways. And so when you interact, whether it's with your students, whether it's with your families, whether it's with friends, colleagues, think about that notion. Is this a space where we're tearing down or we're elevating? We're lifting each other up. Because I think when we lift each other up, not only does it help the person you're supporting, but I honestly think it makes a positive impact on you. So it's just something I was thinking about. Uh, I hope it helps you kind of think about your interactions, you know, today, this week, moving forward. And I just wanted to share that story because I think um, it, it's kind of kudos to that referee for having such an impact on me and him not maybe knowing that impact and maybe this will get to him at some point I know he knows who it is because I, I, I'm sure that if you heard the story he would know that exact interaction and, and I just hope he knows that positive impact he had on me um, just it wasn't just what he said but it was how he said it and, and how he lifted me up so I hope you enjoyed that thanks for listening to another episode of Mindset Monday I hope you have a wonderful week I hope to set the tone thanks for all you do take care